Imagine being a kid and being afraid of going to the playground. Has this ever happened to you before? For most of you, probably not. Unfortunately, this was me as a kid. Hi, my name is Emily Truce, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my journey through anxiety. I have many allergies, nuts, eggs, peas, shellfish, along with many animals. This made it hard going to friends' houses, traveling, and for me, going to a simple NHL hockey game. I was always worried about having an allergic reaction. This started developing into something far worse, and little did I know it affect my entire future. As I started to grow up, my fear of allergies turned into a fear of germs and illnesses. Whenever I walked outside, I would cover my mouth just to make sure nothing I was allergic to would get into my mouth. I also avoided touching anything outside my house, and when I'd eventually get home, I would constantly wash my hands. My childhood was blinded by anxiety, and if I could go back and change it, I would. Anxiety still affects me today, but I have found many coping mechanisms to help me throughout my day. Today, we see anxiety developing in our society, and it affects millions of people around the world. Now, most people suffer from anxiety. We all get it from schoolwork, performances, during a sports game. But I suffered from an extreme version of it. I had too much of it, and it affected my whole lifestyle. Anxiety for me was the fear of what if, which is the worst possible words I could think of. This is a future that I made up in my head, which is rarely ever positive. This made me naturally having a hard time focusing and being comfortable. My mind was always somewhere else. No one could tell when I get anxious because of after many years with these problems, I've always found a way of hiding it behind a smile. I come from a family of doctors. My mom is a medical oncologist and my dad is a hematologist. So we naturally have a clean house and let's just say we wash our hands more than the average family. Yes, you would think living in a house with my parents as doctors would automatically make me feel more safe, but my parents and I didn't realize my anxiety was developing and it made it hard for me to feel safe anywhere, including home. My parents and I started noticing my anxiety when I was at my brother Michael's baseball game. Another girl my age had gone off to play on the playground. Yes, I would have rather gone off to play, but my anxious mind had gotten in the way. Her mother came over and asked if I'd like to play, but I responded no. She later talked to my dad, explaining the situation. But no matter how much he tried to convince me, my anxious mind got in the way and I said no. Another time we started noticing my anxiety was on vacations. I was in Disney, a place full of laughter and fun was scary for me. I always had the extra thought of losing my family, having an allergic reaction, or something far worse would happen. My family would go out to eat dinner and lunch each day, but I would barely eat anything. I would have to step outside restaurants at the age of seven to get fresh air and calm myself down. The bad part was, is I was barely eating anything. My parents would get frustrated that I wouldn't eat anything, and that's because I didn't trust the food that they put in front of me. After each meal, I would constantly ask my parents if I'd eaten enough, but the answer was always no. After my parents realized my anxiety had gotten too far, they made me start seeing a therapist in grade seven. I would see her every week, but I found myself lying to her because I didn't want her to know how bad my problem was. My parents were not seeing any changes in my anxiety and started questioning me on what I was telling my therapist. They found out I'd been lying. Something I'd lie about is eating foods in restaurant when, and when I know I didn't because I was too nervous. I started telling my therapist the truth 
And that is when I started seeing a huge change in my anxiety. My anxiety went under the radar for the next year and a half because I wasn't feeling anxious anymore. But things started to change at the end of grade nine. The person you see here standing before you today was completely different near the end of grade nine. My anxiety started developing after I got a horrible migraine. I was in gym class and my vision started to get blurred. I went to the health center, very nauseous, and went home. And that made me start worrying about illnesses and started me on a new path of anxiety. I started worrying about things that were way out of my control. I have asthma, so I'd check my fingernails to make sure they weren't blue because I wasn't getting enough oxygen, or I was checking my pulse to make sure my heart was beating correctly. These are things kids shouldn't have to worry about, especially if there's nothing wrong with them. Hearing stories of other people's illnesses would make me start feeling different symptoms. The biggest ones for me was shortness of breath and feeling lightheaded, but these were all self-inflicted. I would practically make myself feel like this and get extremely nervous. This anxiety started to get in the way of the things that I loved to do. During hockey, when I should have been focusing on the next shift, I would find myself checking my pulse and make sure I was breathing correctly. Now imagine what I would think if I were given time to myself. This made me have trouble studying and relaxing because I always had the thought of illnesses in the back of my head. I couldn't sit still and I always had to be playing with something in my hands to distract myself. My parents didn't think much about this because I always hid it behind a smile. I stayed up many nights too worried to go to sleep and I panicked going anywhere, but my parents didn't know. I started using coping methods that my therapist taught me, which actually really helped me. Now that I have come to recent times, I'm gonna tell you about my March break trip. I have never been on the other side of the world before. And to be honest, the thought petrified me. My family traveled to Germany, Italy, and Switzerland with many of my brother's friends to play hockey. I thought traveling to Europe was gonna be a big step for me, which almost seemed impossible. I was worried about both food and illnesses. I was very anxious on the way there, but I had my brother, my parents, and my friend Farah, who all know about my struggles, supporting me the whole way. Once I got there, I immediately fell in love with the place. I made many friends and played a different type of hockey than I was used to. I couldn't think of a time where I was anxious while I was there and even being back. Well, except for takeoffs on planes, but that's a problem for a different time. Throughout my long journey, I think I can finally say it has come to an end. I've pushed through the hardest times with the support of family and friends. I can say my anxiety has changed me and the way that I grew up. I've learned not to keep my feelings hidden behind a smile because it makes my situation worse, not helping me, or the community around me. Now, don't make the same mistake as me and not tell anyone about your problems because with the support of friends, family, and even people around school, there will always be a way to solve your problems. I think the best way to reach out to someone is telling someone that you trust. Tell them your problem and what you want to be solved. You can also go to guidance at school because they are always here to help you. I know it is hard to talk about your problems and we still need to destigmatize mental health and wellness issues because the thought around them right now is preventing people from seeking help. As a society, we are advancing and opening up our arms and expanding our knowledge of mental health, but we still have further steps to take to becoming a full, welcoming community. Now I ask you, Open your arms and be welcoming, because if you don't, you do not know who is going through a problem right now that you can help solve. And I ask you, if you need help, if you need help, 
you are not alone. Now please rise and sing hymn 418. 